Hey everyone. Welcome to Top Tech News. This is your news channel for getting updated with the latest tech news headlines and their impact on business and our lives. To read the full news article for any of the news that we cover, simply click on its link given below in the description. To stay updated, show us some love and hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. This way you would be informed whenever we upload a new video. Hi, my name is D and I am your host for today. Today's top headlines are Tesla is getting closer to production at Gigafactory, Texas. Tritium partners with Loop to provide DC fast chargers to EV network. Google launching the Android earthquake alert system globally over the coming year. Voice access on Android gains gaze detection and password input improvements. Apple's health records feature on iPhone now supported by Mayo Clinic. Let's get started. Tesla is getting closer to production at Gigafactory, Texas as Model Y body is spotted on site. The start of production at Gigafactory, Texas and Gigafactory, Berlin is the most important thing for Tesla's growth this year. Starting production in any vehicle program is always difficult, and even more so when you are building a brand new factory from scratch. But Tesla has done it before, and it's looking to do it again with two new factories coming up almost simultaneously. Gigafactory Texas is going to first produce an updated version of the Model Y for the North American market. The new version is expected to use Tesla's latest mega casting technology that replaces a lot of body parts with single giant cast parts produced using the world's largest casting machines. Last month it was reported on Tesla producing its first Model Y mega cast at Gigafactory Texas after installing the first machines. It was the first sign of Tesla getting much closer to production at the new factory, which is still very much under construction, but Tesla has been known to not let that stop it. Now a new drone flyover spotted what looks like an almost completed Model Y body, which is another sign that the automaker is getting closer to production. The video shows a lot of progress in building the giant new structure, which looks about half completed, but production is expected to start before the entire structure is completed, since a single section is as big as some other car factories. Tesla has also been ramping up listing production jobs at the factory, which is also a good sign that the automaker is officially guiding the start of Model Y production at the factory by the end of the year. However, the actual start of production is not as important as the speed of the ramp up, which isn't likely to be significant until early next year. We know for sure that the new Model Y produced at Gigafactory Texas is going to feature more megacast parts, but it's not clear if it will be powered by the new 4680 cells and structural battery pack. That would be a big deal. It's also interesting to see who can bring the Model Y to production first, the Berlin team or the Austin team, and while the internal competition is fun, they can also benefit from what they learn from each new production site. Tritium partners with Loop to provide DC fast chargers to EV network. DC fast charging hardware and software manufacturer Tritium has announced a collaboration with Loop, a developer and operator of both public and private EV charging networks. The partnership begins with Tritium's DCFCs on Loop's network on Los Angeles Miracle Mile, with plans to expand further in California followed by expansion to other states. Tritium is an Australian DCFC hardware and software manufacturer founded in 2001, with offices in the US and Europe. Last month, Tritium announced a definitive agreement for a SPAC merger with Decarbonization Plus Acquisition Corporation 2 which is expected to be completed in Q4 of this year. Loop provides turnkey hardware, software and service solutions to customers with the goal of making EV charging less of a hassle and more accessible to people. This is what the company calls Loop as a service, or LAS. Tritium and Loop plan to combine their respective expertise to provide seamless and easily implemented DC fast charging solutions throughout California and beyond. In a press release from Tritium, the collaboration agreement with Loop was officially announced and will begin with three RT50 chargers with capable outputs of 50 kilowatts. These Tritium chargers exist at a commercial office building on the heavily trafficked Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles. The chargers are brand agnostic too so EV drivers of any make or model will be able to get energy from them on Loop's network. As part of this new partnership, Tritium plans to work with Loop to fill existing EV charging gaps for drivers, beginning with California. The companies have already shared plans for expansion to other states, including Arizona, New York, and New Jersey. Google launching the Android Earthquake Alert system globally over the coming year. Back in April, Google activated the Android Earthquake Alert system in Greece and New Zealand. This Google Play services-powered mechanism is now live in seven more nations as the global launch gets underway. The Android Earthquake Alert system uses your phone's accelerometer to detect the initial P wave generated by quakes. Your device sends a city-level location that does not include zip code or street address to Google's earthquake detection server. 
The company then verifies before sending a loud notification that includes location and magnitude before the destructive S wave hits. This alert can take over your screen and provides a drop, cover, and hold reminder. This system is now available for Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz Republic, the Philippines, Tajikistan, Turkey, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. Looking ahead, Google plans to launch this capability globally over the coming year, starting in countries with higher earthquake risks and working down from there. Wide availability of Android devices with Play services will be required. The company's stated goal is to create the world's largest earthquake detection network. It comes as establishing a ground network of seismometers, like USGS Shake Alert in California and the West Coast, is not always possible. Android users can opt out from the service though by going to device settings, then location, advanced and finally earthquake alerts. This has been in testing since last year, but Google just started sending notifications in two countries this April. The company previously shared what the Android earthquake alert system captures after a Los Angeles tremor in September of 2020. Voice access on Android gains gaze detection and password input improvements. Google's accessibility efforts with Android are to be commended, and the firm has announced yet more options including improved password input and gaze detection with the voice access feature. If you are unaware, voice access on Android lets you control your device with spoken commands. This is separate to the new Google Assistant which offers similar hands-free contextual control of your devices. Voice access works in English, Spanish, German, Italian, and French at present. Although built into the Android system, you still need to activate the feature within the accessibility settings. Voice access left beta back in 2018, and at the time we went hands-on with a feature aimed at helping those with mobility impairments or disabilities from accessing their devices without needing to physically interact with their smartphones. Gaze detection has now arrived within voice access in beta and when toggled will only work when you're looking at your phone screen. This might make it easier to flip between general day-to-day -day conversations without inadvertently activating portions of your Android phone. Gaze detection works in a similar manner to that of screen attention on Pixel devices, which prevents your screen from turning off if you're looking at it. A status bar icon with a face will indicate whether your device has detected you looking at your smartphone display. On top of gaze detection, voice access is also getting enhanced password input. When controlling your device, voice access is now able to better distinguish between password input fields. You can just say your password with any capitalization where necessary or you can just as easily say the names of symbols and special characters. This should make it even easier to get logged into your accounts. As an option for those with motor or mobility impairments, gaze detection and enhanced password input will be welcome features arriving as part of voice access. Apple's health records feature on iPhone now supported by Mayo Clinic. The Mayo Clinic has announced that it now supports Apple's health records feature. This means that Mayo Clinic patients with a patient online services account can now use health records to access health data directly from their iPhone. Using health records within the Apple Health app on iPhone allows users to gather their health data from different providers and institutions into a single location. It also allows users to see their health records alongside data collected by other third-party apps and from the Apple Watch. The Mayo Clinic also stresses that privacy is at the forefront of the health records implementation. Use of health records in iPhone's health app is optional and will not change or affect the user's patient online services account, the company says. Health records protects patients' privacy by using an encrypted connection between the user's iPhone and healthcare organizations. Downloaded health records are stored on the user's device and encrypted with the user's passcode. Users access their Mayo Clinic health records by authenticating with their patient online services username and password. Health records is available on iPhones but not iPads. With the expansion of health records to the Mayo Clinic, there are now more than 700 institutions and 12,000 care locations that support health records. Well, that's about it for today. Hope you found it helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. And do show us some love by clicking on the thumbs up button. Have a wonderful day everyone and we will be back again soon.